very good morning to you, Andrew. Morning, Evan. Yeah, uh, today it's a it's a, um, a branch and root review of our defence forces. What are you what are you going to be looking at? Well, this is the third review that we will have had uh, of defence and security since 2021. We conducted a review that concluded just a couple of years ago, and the conclusion of that led us to uh, commit to giving 2.5% of GDP spending on defence by uh, 2030. That was a commitment that Britain should have been able to go uh, to NATO summit last week and demonstrate our leadership in this regard. Unfortunately, the Labour Party, the new Labour government, have been unable to match that commitment, and this new review, which we don't think is uh, necessary, will now uh, take place and will not report back until 2025, uh, by which stage we still do not know whether or not Labour will commit to more uh, defence spending. We all agree there needs to be more money on defence. Why Labour can't commit to that is, you know, I, I, is for them to answer. But really, what we should have been able to do was lead the world last week at NATO. Say we're spending 2.5% on defence. Had a Conservative government being re-elected, that's what we would have been doing. And so we really do reiterate our calls for the Labour government to step up, show leadership and commit commit to spending more on defence, as we were going to do, uh, had we been successful in the election. So if the review came back and said, look, we need a 5% increase overall in budget, it wouldn't be that you would necessarily be against that? No, I mean, look, we will obviously let the review uh, take its course. There are some eminent individuals uh, being appointed to conduct the review, and we wish them well. Uh, the point is that had we been elected last week, we would have been spending more on defence right now, and we would have been leading the world at NATO last week, showing our determination to take on uh, Vladimir Putin uh, uh, with his actions in Ukraine, and indeed all the other threats that the Western world faces right now. The, the fact that the Labour Party hadn't been able to do that, I do think, uh, is a signal of... Uh, things to come. So whilst we will wait with interest the results of the defence review, what we need to do is get on and start spending the money that our armed forces so desperately need right now. There will be cynics listening to this though, Andrew Bowie, who will be aware that the Conservatives' position when actually in government was exactly the same as Starmer's is now that he's in government 2.5% um, when those economic conditions allow. You only increased it and guaranteed it <laughs> once you were running for this general election, which all of the polls showed you were going to lose. So there was no risk that you'd actually have to pay for it. If you really, truly as a party believed in it, why didn't you impose it sooner? No, we announced our commitment to 2.5% by 2030, well in advance of the general election being called. I remember doing a media round uh, just like by this 2030, uh, on yeah, the announcement. Is, uh, actually, if you before. forgive me, by 2030, which is some time after this review is likely to have concluded. Yes, but there would have been incremental increases uh, uh, from this point uh, forward. It's really important that uh, the money gets to where it's needed, and that's what we would have done had we been re-elected. To say when economic conditions allow, I mean, that's giving us... A, that, there's, no, there's no end point uh, to that statement. That could be 10, 15, 20 years. And the armed forces need certainty. The military needs to know whether or not they're going to get the money that they need to spend on the equipment and the, and the personnel that they require to keep this country and our allies safe uh, moving forward. And what's a, a very tumultuous, uh, increasingly dangerous world. Uh, personnel is going to be a, a big problem for you overall um, and your uh, Veterans uh, Affairs Minister, you, you'll know this, um, it's not an attractive or it's a less attractive uh, career option for youngsters today. How do you change that, Andrew? Yeah, that's the big question. It's something that we uh, grappled with whilst we were uh, in office. Uh getting more young people to think about the armed forces as a career. I did. I left school and joined the Royal Navy and I served for a few years in the senior service, had an, an absolutely fantastic time and it's a, a very fulfilling, very rewarding career for anybody that wants to uh, take that up. But we do have to ask the question as to why there are fewer people choosing to leave education, uh, be that school, college, university and take up a career in our armed forces. And maybe that's one thing that this review will actually look at. And then, of course, we will uh, obviously respect the findings of that and do what we can to support uh, the government in uh, encouraging more people to join up uh, because it's very important and you know can give a very rewarding uh, career to anybody that chooses.
Um, I want to ask you about the comments by George Robertson. He's the former NATO Secretary General and himself a former uh, Defence Secretary, saying that we need to uh, have a, ref a revamp in this country and of our Western allies in the face of the deadly quartet, as he puts it, and he's referring to North Korea, China, Russia and Tehran. Uh, in the context of all of that, overnight we've seen J.D. Vance being announced uh, as uh, Donald Trump's running mate, um, and he himself has said that uh, he doesn't really care what happens in Ukraine. What do you make of those comments in the light of this threat that's being highlighted by the former Secretary General? Well, look, I obviously agree with uh, Lord Robertson. Uh, we do face increasing threats across the world, and he talks about the deadly quartet. He is not wrong uh, in his analysis. Uh, however, we'll work with whoever uh, uh, wins the U.S. election in November, and we've got to look at the leading role that the United States has played over the decades in keeping Europe safe. You know, a leading uh, member of NATO, a leading member uh, when it comes to the UN Security Council, taking decisions that impact on the lives of so many people across the world, defending democracy and standing up for freedom. America has always done that, and I fully uh, expect uh, America to continue to take that leading role with our full support, whoever is successful in the American election come November. Um, speaking of November, suggestions that Rishi Sunak ought to stay in place as this caretaker leader until then. Um, and then there is likely to be uh, this Conservative Party leadership contest. Now, Ben Houchen, as you know, the only um, mayor who, the, I suppose you could say, the most powerful Conservative in the party, has said it's incredibly important that there isn't a fractious contest, or you could see the party in a long period of wilderness. Do you agree with those comments? And do you think that there are any particular names in the hat who've thrown their hat? in the ring who could be problematic for that. Look, well, you're not going to get draw me on uh, any particular candidate uh, just yet. But what I would agree with uh, Ben Houchen's uh, you know, summation that we don't want a fractured contest. In saying that, we do uh, need to have a full, frank and open debate about what the Conservative Party stands for, what we will offer the country in the next half of this decade. And that's what I fully expect our leadership election uh, to be about. Uh, the timeline for all that and how it will work is for the party board and the 1922 committee to work out. And meetings are ongoing almost as we speak uh, to determine uh, just those uh, very things. But in terms of the debate that we're going to have, as I just said uh, to another broadcaster, we need to uh, return to the point where we are able to uh, disagree agreeably and have civil uh, debate. But yes, up front, uh, an open debate about where we are going as a party moving forward and then what we can offer the country. When the question is put to uh, the people of Britain in four or five years' time, who do you want to be your government? I want the answer to be the Conservative Party. So we've got to get it right. We've got to get the person in that can lead us into the next election. But Ben Houchen's absolutely right. It can't be a fractured contest okay. or we are destined for years in the wilderness. Um